Yo, what's going on guys? Chris Bond here, Overtime Athlete. Just want to make a quick video for you guys. Um, if you guys are watching some of my coaching videos, you can see that with some of my athletes, I'm actually peaking them, getting ready to transition into actual camp and their actual season. And with that being said, towards the end of it, some of the methods that I start to utilize, um, I want to make sure that we can transfer all that strength training, all the weight room stuff that we've been doing onto the field, court, uh, competition for that matter. One of the methods that I actually love using and I've been dabbling a lot in and doing a lot of research in is going to be your contrast or complex style training where we take a resistant style movement with weights, right? And we perform a full range of motion rep. We heighten the nervous system. Then we take that heightened nervous system transferred over to a more dynamic movement that's similar utilizing the same muscles so that that movement can then perform at a higher level, right? So for instance, you take a back squat, you perform a heavy back squat, nervous system's lit up, and then we go perform an all out box jump, okay? So we're still using hip extension, movement's the same, posterior chain gets lit up, and then we transfer it over to the box jump. Well, one method that I've been utilizing is basically for that resistance style movement, instead of performing a full range of motion, what I've been doing is I've been performing an isometric contraction with that resistance training, and then transferring it over to more of a connected, more dynamic plyometric, okay? So to give you guys a heads up and give you guys a little bit of background, as we know in a full range of motion, there's an eccentric portion, which is the lengthening of the muscle. I'll just use my bicep. So eccentric portion, you're coming down, there's the lengthening of the muscle. You have the isometric, right? Where the length doesn't change. And then you have concentric, where the length shortens of the muscle, okay? So it's shortening if you think of it like that. Now through those three phases, we know scientifically that in isometric, that you can recruit maximal motor units through that phase. So with that being said, and I'll continue to plug this, but you guys, I, I, the resource I'm utilizing is Caldeach Triphasic Training. Make sure you take a look at that. It's, it's been paramount to some of my training and how I've been training athletes. Shout out to him, amazing coach. What, what you notice was obviously is through the isometric is that maximal motor units. Not only does it help maximal motor re uh, recruitment, right? The heightened nervous system that we're talking about, where the stimulus we're receiving, it also works with rate coding, but not dealing with that, just heightened nervous system here to break it down into more simple terms. Um, we want to perform a movement that's like that. Then with the plyometric movement, now that we're heightened, instead of one all out movement, I want to make this a more dynamic movement. So I might do some kind of um, some kind of uh, connected bounds or power skips for height. Something where it's utilizing the same musculature, like I said, but it's something that's more connected where they're performing diff the eccentric, isometric, concentric continuously as opposed to just one all out movement. Now, with that being said, the isometric movements that I like to utilize is a little bit of a twist on that as well. The twist on that is most of you guys that perform isometric movements traditionally, I shouldn't say traditionally, most of you perform a pause rep. So what I mean by that is you, you perform some form of a back squat and you sit into that back squat and pause and then explode out of it. Well, that's an isometric contraction because the length doesn't change in the muscle. It's more of an isotonic contraction as well. The reason why it's isotonic isometric is because isotonic means the tension doesn't change. So if you have 225 pounds on your back, you sit down, you pause, there's still 225 pounds on your back. The tension of 225 pounds doesn't change. You might fatigue, but the actual weight doesn't change. What I like to do is I like to perform some kind of thing in the weight room, I shouldn't say thing, I like to set the weight room up so that the athlete can actually dictate the tension. And I do this for a small series of bouts. So what I'll do, and I'll just use this trap bar here, like I said, I can perform a squat as well. I like to put the athlete in the same range of motion that they're gonna be performing when they perform the dynamic movement. So I might change the actual uh, the actual range that they're performing the isometric on, but I usually keep it 
within that range that they're gonna perform the movement. For instance, I'm not gonna have an athlete squat all the way down and then go perform that. I might have them in like a quarter squat, right above parallel or a little bit higher because this is the same range of motion that you're gonna see them jump in. So again, he, I have anchors here where I use the pins and actual tension is actually going to increase. So I tell them, hey, on your market set go, boom, for five seconds, they're driving as much as they possibly can. As opposed to just fighting 225 pounds, they're fighting all out tension as much as they possibly can. So if you think about that, 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 that nervous system is just getting lit up, shot up immediately in those muscles that we wanna use. Then we take our you know, 60 seconds, 30 seconds, walk over to the turf, perform the dynamic movement connected. And then what I'm experiencing is that nervous system is extremely lit up. We're recruiting maximal motor units, maximal muscle fibers um, when they actually perform that movement. And I just wanted to share with you guys my background or thinking as to why I'm performing those. I might actually have the athlete go five seconds on, one second off, or five seconds off. Actually, I'll make a video, I'll make a part two to this and explain all the reps, sets, parameters, and the actual movements that I'm utilizing that's been supporting these athletes in getting faster, more powerful on the field. Make sure you guys check out the description below. I have a vertical series that you guys can check out and uh, it's completely free. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.